closeness of the guitarist watching Glenn honestly makes me question whether bass players are really the idiots of the band after all. Well, you know, when I started doing viewers' comments way back in 2014, the bass players were undoubtedly the dumbest members of the band. However, guitar players always have to be number one at everything, and they've been working very, very hard to catch up, as evidenced by the comments on this show. Hey everybody, it's the weekend. Hope you're gonna have a good one. Myself, I'm just coming off a major production bender. I've been locked in here for like the last four days uh, doing an expose on the Celestian T75 speaker, the hated Celestian T75 speaker. The thing that I've never, ever, ever been able to get to sound good until now. I've got a really cool breakdown on it. Uh, it should be out by the time this video goes live. And if it does, if it's not live, make sure you're subscribed so you'll get notified when that video comes out because it's something you're not going to want to miss. It's a great way to get an awesome guitar sound uh, for not a whole lot of money because right now the T75s aren't that expensive on the used market, at least till my video comes out anyway. All right, let's get your comments and questions right now. I'm not bringing a fucking computer anywhere with me. Kemper is still gone. Well, good for you, man. I'm glad you're still bringing your Kemper to the gig. I'm sure you made the proper investment and it will never, ever, 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 ever become obsolete because that never happens with computer technology. By the way, you said it's still God. Which God in particular? You know, because I've read most of the major popular religions in the world and it always comes down to the same thing. The gods in these books are real assholes. Ever notice that? I'm a subscriber. However, the videos about recording techniques like the acoustic miking tech and how to get your guitars to sit in a mix did not come up in my feed. The quote unquote clickbait videos always float to the top. Had I not watched this video, I wouldn't have known about the other two. Fucking algorithm. Hey Jeff, that's a fantastic point. Yeah, that's the thing. Some of my two tutorials don't get the traction that some of my other videos do so that does tell me they're not being recommended like uh, some of my viewers comments are so I think what I'm gonna do actually is do a weekly recap at the beginning of each viewers comments and show you guys hey here's what I've been working on here's what's come out so yes in case you guys did miss it I did an awesome uh, acoustic miking tutorial with Burnth from his show. I did it when I was at the Lewitt studio last summer. We had a lot of fun working on it. So if you're cur curious about how to mic an acoustic guitar and get it to sound good, I definitely recommend checking out that. And the other one, this one did a lot better and it's been helpful to a lot of people is how to get your guitars to sit in a mix correctly. I take you through my whole process and help you guys figure out how to do it and make it work in your situation. It's really not that difficult to do once you know what steps to take. I've got a whole breakdown on that. You can follow the link in the description below and hopefully that video is gonna help you get better results coming out of your speakers and take the grief of the learning process. Good luck. And of course, if you are missing notifications to those super helpful tutorials, you can always hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so at least it'll come up in your feed. And here's the crazy thing, 55% of you guys who watch the show haven't actually hit the subscribe button. It's not like it costs you anything. All you gotta do is take half a second, move your mouse over and hit the little button. That's it. And believe me, it would be such a gigantic help to the show because it'll help me give you guys better reviews and better tutorials and that's all I wanna do. I need your help to make it happen. So I am asking, please, 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 hit the freaking subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. That reminds me, we did hit 550,000 subscribers not too long ago, and uh, I do have a first gen 5150 I have to give away. Uh, more details on that in the future. Make sure you watch the show. My father does home recording and insists on running direct from the head instead of micing up the center cone of the speaker in the cabin. I despise the tinny stacky sound you get from running directly in the head. He swears by it, he declares that is the sound coming out of the cabin. Well, hey there, Dixie. Uh, I've got an idea for you. If you could, why don't you get your dad's attention and you can play on this next little bit. You're wrong! Okay, Dad, please pay attention here. Okay, when you come out of the back of an amplifier and record that directly, it's going to sound like shit. It doesn't sound like crap at all. I think it's awesome. It's going to sound like fried assholes. No, you that is not the sound coming out of your speaker because the speaker is a very dynamic and complex filter and we can measure what it does with a frequency response graph. Sound coming out of your amp doesn't do that. The sound has to go through that filter to give us the sound that's pleasant to our ears. This is easily testable. This is easily measurable. So I don't know, maybe unstick your head from your ass and stop pretending like you know everything and maybe try paying attention. You might just like the results you get. Then again, I could be wrong. Maybe you do know everything. 
All right, guys, now one of the ways I can make this show happen is through my company, Spectre Digital. Uh, we've got that amazing bass amp sim up for grabs. It's called Element Bass, and it's gonna help you get a mix like this. One of the most important things about getting a great mix is having a great bass tone. Because without a great bass tone, your whole record's going to suffer. And this is why I've been so hard on bass players over the years is because they don't take their role seriously and they don't realize just how important they are. And we went out of our way at Spectre Digital to create the ultimate bass amp sim to give you great results just at the touch of a button. Go grab a copy now. You can find it in the link in the description below. SpectreDigital.com, grab Element Bass, you won't be sorry. And oh yes, we now have support for Pro Tools on both Mac and PC, and we fixed a bunch of bugs and all that kind of stuff too. We've got her up and running. It's definitely worth checking it out. Grab your copy today. All right, guys, now I'm going to do a new feature on the show. It's called Let's Do the Math. Music, please. The lowest paying job on their website that isn't an internship is a wet sander at $22 an hour. That's a far cry from minimum wage and exploitation of American workers. Some guys, this guy is pretty ridiculous. Well, hey there, D, D Johnson. Is that Don or Dick or, 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 or Doorknob? You didn't really specify, so I'm just going to take a wild guess here. Anyway, thank you so much for writing in and letting us know that $22 is fine as far as wages go um and you know i would agree with you if this were 1990 you fuckwit let's do the math here for a second here and see just where 22 dollars an hour is going to get you see because you're talking about gibson of course the thing about gibson is they're located in nashville if we even spend three seconds on google and try and learn something instead of just shooting off our big stupid fucking mouths we'd realize that the average rent price for a one-bedroom apartment in nashville tennessee is one thousand seven hundred and forty eight dollars fuck that ain't what i'd call cheap that's for sure so let's do a little math here and see 22 dollars an hour times a 40 hour work week that's 880 dollars so if i work two weeks i make 1760 and that should cover rent however that's before taxes so if we start taking all that off suddenly we're gonna have to work maybe two and a half weeks to just be able to afford rent that doesn't cover cost to get to and from the factory because working as a wet sander at gibson is not exactly what you You'd call it a work at home job you have to go into the plant and put in the time so that means money on transportation that means gas that means insurance or public transit or whatever you will i don't even know what the public transit system is like in nashville much less if there's transit actually to the gibson factory that's a big unknown i don't know maybe somebody can clue me in with that and then we've got to be able to afford groceries so at 22 dollars an hour in your words which is not exploitation i think the worker is going to have maybe after cost of living maybe 50 bucks left at the end of the month to spend on themselves somewhere around that now if that's not exploitation please clue us in as to what would be exploitation simple truth is in today's economy 22 dollars an hour is jack fucking shit gibson you should be paying your wet sanders 32 dollars an hour so maybe they would have the hope of saving up for their own home one day because right now they can't fucking live on what you're fucking paying them you cheap motherfuckers Why would a guy who only records that tired metal sound where pickups, tubes, wood, etc. doesn't matter waste his money on an e-board? Please do tell. Well, they're 2550 Marshall. The thing is, you know, we did a bunch of clean tones on a two rock and the difference from guitar to guitar to guitar uh, was about that big. You can check that video out in my archives if you like. Uh, you might not like the results we get though, that's for sure. And guess the thing, you know, we blind tested a PRS and a Les Paul. Nobody could tell which guitar was which. They all kind of sound variations on a thing. Now, as to your question, why I'd spend all that money on this awesome Neve console. Well, let me give you a little perspective. Unlike humbucker pickups or tone wood on a solid body electric, this actually changes sound. And that's what I want to spend my money on, something that will actually make a difference in the sound. That, and if you watch my install video, speed was a big factor as well because it's got a touchscreen, it's an analog digital hybrid console, and it's just fucking awesome, and it's an incredible way to work. And it just allows me to get my content done quicker because I'd rather spend maybe an hour on a mix than 12 hours on a mix fucking around with a mouse. I'm gonna have some details on that coming up real soon. I don't know, maybe subscribe to the show. You just might learn something. 
I can't believe so many people are still giving a shit over the speaker issue. All through the 80s and the 90s, I bought into guitar magazines, bullshit of tone web pickups and amps, spending thousands of dollars. Playing through a maze cabinet, I would try different cabinets, and there was a massive difference between the cabinets. The one I liked most was a Marshall, so I took it apart and see what it's found the key. The Marshall had greenbacks, the Randall G had G12s, and the Mesa had vintage 30s. I put the greenbacks in my Mesa cabinet, and it's been my tone since 96. A dual rectifier Mesa cabinet with greenbacks. I wish someone like you was telling the truth back in the 80s. It would have saved me at least $13,000. I love what you do on the show, bro. Guys, basic grammar, you know, like periods really do help. They allow the reader to take a breath. Just just a small request on my part, please. Just basic grammar can be a big help. Anyway, I'm really grateful for that. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear that I could help you save you some money. Hopefully that's the idea here that some of you guys are paying attention to this who haven't dropped your money on a bunch of fucking bullshit you don't need to buy and start looking at the things that actually do affect the sound and that would be the speaker. Remember guys, if you're not getting the guitar sound you like, it's not your guitar, it's not your amp, it's definitely not your fucking pickups. Uh, start with a speaker, change it out and see what you like. And here's the thing, make recordings, make a B recordings and compare them so you can actually hear the changes instead of changing stuff out and go, oh, I think I heard a difference in a fucking vacuum because we tend to forget what things sound like a couple seconds after we hear them. Make recordings so you can make direct comparisons. Dude, I think this keeps getting missed in the comments, but I'd love to see you do a test on whether or not pickup covers make a difference. Of course they make a difference. Just ask all the people trying to sell you pickup covers. You have great content, but I'll have to disagree here. I changed my EMGs out for Fishman's and it made a huge difference to me. I'll bet it made an even bigger difference to your wallet. Pure didn't close mine gatekeeping metalheads are the fucking worst. Like being in the metal and playing metal is some kind of fucking secret society. Probably why I don't have any metal friends. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Puritans of any brand doesn't matter what the subject is. Puritans suck. Okay, Glenn, let's put this to the test. Let's say you're hiring an assistant for your studio. Do you A, hire the guy who's been mixing in venues for a year, B, hire the guy with a fresh degree in audio engineering, or C, give the applicants a simple test to see what, if they know what they're doing. The problem with degrees is there's too many that are good at the student game, regurgitating textbook on demand, but lack real comprehension. I've talked to people who hire IT, and they tell me about people with IT certs that can't answer basic help desk type questions. Bottom line, no one cares about papers, they just want to know if you can do the thing. I'm in total agreement there. You know, that's the thing. I've had numerous kids come in over the years, and, you know, they, they hand me a piece of paper, I'm like, great, what have you done? Let's hear what you got. That's the first thing I want to do. Oh, you know. And then, you know, the real decider for me though is, okay, that's a great resume. Cool mix you got there. What are your video editing skills like? And then I get the deer in the headlights look. It's like, it's like guys, traditional studios don't really exist anymore. If you can't edit video, can't use you. That's really what it comes down to. And this is the thing I've been screaming at so many recording schools about this. It's changed, guys. The traditional studio doesn't fucking exist anymore. You need to teach your students at least some basic video editing skills alongside the audio skills because audio skills just aren't enough anymore. My drummer just learned there's a drum tuner and he's been drumming for over 25 years. Wow, well miracles never cease. Hopefully in another 25 years, you might be able to learn to not hit the hi-hat as hard. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Thanks for subscribing, watching, and all of that good stuff. Once again, if you missed my video on how to get your guitars to sit in a mix, check out why your guitars sound like shit in a mix. It's a lot of help, and if you're struggling, it's got the answers you're looking for. And make sure you check out Element Bass over at Spectre Digital. It's gonna give your guitar sound the bottom end it needs because it creates an awesome bass sound, which is the foundation for any awesome metal mix. As always, please keep those comments and questions coming. I love hearing from you guys and please do me the favor of hitting the subscribe button. Help me get to 600,000. I've got that goal. We need to hit that hopefully in the next few months. That'd be fucking amazing, but I need your help to make that happen. So if you haven't subscribed, please do me the honor, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Have an amazing weekend and take care of each other. And please, above all, stay safe. Hang on, what? No, don't fucking say that. <laughs>